I will be telling a story on how I found out I had kidney failure. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Um, sharing it will be very helpful because it will spread awareness. Um, so thank you guys and stay tuned. So um, everything started around May, around there. I went to a car show and I ate something and I started throwing up. I just thought I it was food poisoning or whatever, so I had to go home. Um, after that, I was sick for the longest time. Like, I was always tired, um, didn't wanna do anything, no energy. Um, everybody thought I was pregnant. Literally, I'll go to the clinic and they'll just tell me to pee in a cup. And then they'll come back and say, oh, it's negative. You're not pregnant. Like, you know, they just think that they just thought that I was pregnant, literally. And that's it. Or that I had a virus. But later on, it was already October. And I was already, like, kind of fishy. Like, I know, I know something was really wrong with me. So I went to my clinic once again. I didn't go to school that day. Um, my school nurse already knew what was going on and that I was always throwing up. I had to be dismissed from school, all of that. Um, so they took me, well, I went to the clinic, as I said, I didn't go to school that day. And, um, I demanded a blood test because I knew something was wrong with my body. Everyone knows when there's something wrong with your body, obviously. Okay, I feel creeped out. I think somebody's watching. Yes, I'm in the hospital. Um, this is my hospital life. Um, but yeah, let me continue. Anyways, so I went to the clinic and I demanded um, blood work. And they were like, okay. So later on that day, I went to work. It was like four o'clock. I used to work in Strahlid in New Hampshire. And literally like that like my whole shift i was just like feeling like shit my body just couldn't take it anymore my back was hurting my legs were swollen my face was swollen everything i started googling like my symptoms and all that and it came up as heart disease or kidney disease and i was like it's not that it's none of that like you know like i wasn't really thinking about that like i didn't really know much about any of that so right there like two hours later um i go hang out with one of my friends laura that i used to work with and we're just sitting there and i'm telling her i don't feel good like i really feel like shit. like i want to go home right there i get a phone call from my school nurse which is connected to the clinic that i go to greater lawrence or whatever and then right there she told me that the blood work didn't look good and that it might be kidney failure and i'm like i don't know what the fuck that is like what what's going on and she told me and um yeah she just said oh it's better for you to go to the emergency room they're gonna have everything ready for you and i was just panicking like i like i was in shock and then i started to cry and she told me to put on my manager and she spoke to my manager and they let me go. And Laura had to drive me back to Lawrence and I had to leave my car at work. And yeah, I was in the emergency room. Like they had everything ready for me. Right there, um, a doctor came and she asked me one more time, what were my symptoms? And right there, she just told me, none of your kidneys work just like that <sighs> i'm gonna start crying let me not anyways yeah that was on october 12. so when she told me that like i was complete in shock like i didn't cry or nothing like i was just like 
like i literally didn't know like what that was like i started googling and all that stuff and i asked her like like what is that like what am i gonna do what does what is that like you know like i was mad confused and um right there um she told me oh we're gonna have to send you to boston because it was really bad like if i waited one more day like i could have died that's how bad i was like my blood was really dirty i had many toxins all gathered up in my body um they sent me to boston the next day in the morning right away um once i got to boston they were waiting for me and they sent me up to the icu once i was in the icu they gave me some treatment there and i was just drowsy knocked out i didn't know what the fuck was going on all i heard my mom was crying in the background with my dad and the doctors telling them like oh if she dies um what, what would you guys want to do this and that do you guys want us to try everything to keep her alive like cpr um just anything like you know so they made her sign the proxy or whatever i heard her crying in the distance i heard them talking in the distance like i was in another world um right there the next day i wake up i had exactly this i had a, a temporary catheter placed through my neck that's connected to one of the arteries in my heart for um dialysis i did not know what the fuck dialysis was like everything was new to me i i didn't know what was going on the next day when i woke up with this like i wasn't cautious of that like i literally just woke up with that in my neck i was mastiff i didn't know i went into surgery um literally like it was so overwhelming um so <laughs> oh my god so, um, <laughs> I just gotta laugh because life is crazy. Like, you know, it catches you by surprise. One day you could be good and the next day you don't even know. Like, it's crazy. I was a healthy ass kid, bro. Like, healthy, healthy. And out of nowhere, this shit happened. Like, that's just wild. Like, you know? but we're here you know we're blessed you know gotta stay positive but um yeah as i was saying i woke up with this in my neck like i didn't know that i was gonna get surgery or none of that i woke up with one of these in my neck and as you can see i have it again um but when i woke up with this they were talking about dialysis what the fuck is dialysis like i'm like what's going on like can you guys talk to me like tell me what's happening excuse me but they had told me that anyways they started telling me that my blood was very dirty that they had to get rid of all the toxins in it and that i had to go in dialysis in order to stay alive if i didn't do dialysis anyways um i asked them what was that like what does that do and they said that there's a machine that cleans out your blood um through this let me let me just show you guys it's still kind of new i got this two days ago okay so um they told me it's a machine and the machine has two ports it's like two tubes of wire connected to it and a big thing that's the filter so this is the the dirty blood and it connects to the machine and then the machine cleans out all that blood and then it comes back and this is the clean blood that goes back into me so that machine just cleans out all your toxins all your um dirty blood you know but the thing about it is that hemodialysis it makes you feel like shit you feel like you have a hangover um that's just terrible so exhausting like 
you don't want to talk nothing like you just you know you just feel down like wiped out um i fall asleep for hours after dialysis like it's crazy like it's terrible um yeah um what else can i say so after that um like two days later they connected me to do this and i had a terrible allergic reaction to that um first treatment of dialysis um they gave me a blood transfusion and my whole body got hot and it just had a terrible reaction like i almost passed out um after that they just stopped it and they tried the next day and it went better but the feeling of it is terrible it feels like a vampire sucking out all your blood like i hate it it's terrible i wouldn't wish it on anybody kidney failure mm -mm, fuck them kidneys so um yeah um after that um like about five days later after they um already had this they took this out and put another one here wait fuck it hurts as you can see i have these marks here i'll show you guys a picture um i had a tube right here that was inside my heart artery and that was just terrible I can't shower with this, like a full body shower, like it's torture, like it's horrible. Literally, like you can't do shit. You can't, you're always tired, can't get wet. Terrible. So, This one's kind of good, but the mango one is better. <sighs> Anyways, back to the story. So, when they put this in, um, that shit hurt it, bro. Like, that shit really hurt it. Um, there was times where I, I yanked it without wanting to, like, just by mistake. And I felt like I was going to take out my heart with everything. Like, it was terrible um but then the first day i got it right there they connected me to dialysis bro i passed out like literally my blood so as i'm there they start um giving me all these medications one that i specifically hated was prednisone which was a steroid that steroid was 50 milligrams and that shit made my face look like a bola de papa, bro. Like, my face was all swollen. Like, it was terrible. It was, like, incha. And that shit made me feel so insecure and, like, worthless. Like, I hated myself. I was already going through it. And I'm over here looking like, like shit. Like, you don't know how depressed I was. Like, I didn't want to come out. I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was always odiosa, like, you know? And I'm not like that. I'm such a loving person, and I love everyone that surrounds me, you know? Like, I'm I'm very caring and just... I love to show love. But during that time, like, I hated everybody for, like, no reason at all. Like, I didn't want to be around nobody. I didn't want nobody talking to me, nobody calling me, texting me, none of that. And if you know me, you know. Um, man, that that pill gave me mood swings. Like, it was crazy. I was so bipolar. Um, everything made me cry. Like, it was terrible. That was the the most terrible like moment of my life. I'm still on prednisone, but I'm on five milligrams, so it doesn't affect me as much. Um but yeah after they released me from the hospital my dialysis place was boston children's 
because that's where i got diagnosed and everything you know like it was firm over there so that's where i started my dialysis and me and my mom had to go back four times a week back to boston every single morning but first wait my mistake first we started in the afternoon my dialysis was at two o'clock excuse me my dialysis was at two o'clock in the afternoon and we'd go over there like around 11 they'll pick us up like around 11 or whatever we'll get over there um i'll do dialysis my dialysis was four hours because at that time i couldn't control my fluid and i was restricted to one liter a day do you know what it is to try to control yourself to drink one liter a day that was terrible and watching like everyone around me just drink 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 oh um i want something to drink or whatever and me over here just taking little sips or just like feeling it you know like i wouldn't be able to just chug like i had to control it I couldn't do that and that was one of the hardest things I had to deal with um I was always fluid overload which was one of the other reasons why I was always swollen um that was really like that was really a hard time for me too um so I'd go to dialysis my dialysis would start at two and I'll finish like around six do you know all the traffic there is from Boston to Lawrence? And me and sitting in that car, trying not to throw up, trying not to faint, just feeling terrible, wanting to go to sleep, like just stuck in traffic. That shit was horrible. Like one of the most terrible times of my life. Like I would never want to relive that shit ever. Like, me and my mom talk about that sometimes, bro, and we just, like, wow, like, we really went through that, like. But, imagine that, being in traffic while you're sick as fuck. Um, yeah, and one day, um, that I went to dialysis in Boston Children's. The nurses came up to me. I'm in a wheelchair after I finished everything. Like, I'm always in a wheelchair after I finished dialysis because, yo, like I said, I'd be wiped out. I'm so sorry. I just ate a batalito and that shit has me like acid reflux. So, after dialysis one day, so nurses that used to um, do the dialysis for me, they came up to me and they told me, Marimal, you need to stop drinking fluids. You need to stop being fluid overload. Cause my restriction was one liter and I would come in with like five liters and in my body. And that's what would make me even more sick. You know, like I just couldn't control it. The more that they would tell me to stop drinking, the more I wanted to drink. Literally, like. Damn, man. But, yeah, they told me I need to stop drinking and all that. And I yelled at them. I was like, why don't you try drinking one, one liter? Why don't you try it? Try drinking one liter a day to see how it is. See if you can control it. And they stayed shut. And then they started to say, I understand it's not, it's not easy, but you need to try because all that liquid gathers in your heart and you can die from taking out all that fluid through my, through my catheter with my blood um yeah like i just started yelling at them like nobody understands you're not in my shoes you're not the one going through all of this like i was just going off on them i let everything out like that like it was hurting me you know um so after that 
my mom is in the back trying not to cry because she knew like my mom knows everything like she's been in my feet like not in my feet she's been in my shoes basically because she's been there since day one she's seen me in a corner crying she's she's seen me everything like she knows she knows how hard it was Like I was saying. That's gonna be me in the future. Like, even if I get a transplant, that transplant doesn't last forever. So either or, my whole life, I'm gonna be spending it getting a transplant, going back to dialysis, getting another transplant, going back to dialysis. You know? That's gonna be my life. And um, I became friends with a few of them. <laughs> I appreciate them too, because they taught me a lot. And, um, you know, they're older and they have knowledge and they've been through it longer than me. Um, after one year was when they sent me to not one year, it was like seven months. Around there, that's when they sent me to Fresenius. And um, yeah, after doing all that, I started doing um, PD dialysis, which is dialysis through my, through my belly at home. And I was my own nurse, basically. PD dialysis, is like just fluids that go in through your body and those fluid like gather up all the toxins and all that and it gets rid of them like it drains out through another um it drains out through the same tube but it goes into a different bag um i'd had to show you for you to know but um i'll put some pictures and and stuff so um i started doing pd pd dialysis i would had to do every night I had to sleep connected to a machine like it was a life support basically um that machine i would get so mad like i would want to slam it like you know but i appreciated it because it's what keeps me alive it's what kept me alive you know like i hate it so much but i love it i appreciate it um, yeah, everything was going good with that machine. Um, I was starting to be more normal. I'd had more energy. My swelling went down. Um, you know, everything was, was better. And I was really being myself. And then... And it literally grew a bacteria inside my, my stomach that could kill me. So I had to get surgery. I'm like all shaky right now because fucking life, bro. Life. You know what's crazy? This is what breaks my heart. On October 6th, I got a phone call. You know what that phone call was? <laughs> bro, I just, I gotta laugh, bro. Cause I really be going through it. Like, they called me. They called me and they said, hi Maria, we found you a kidney. You know how happy I was? I started crying, crying of joy. Like, I'm not gonna go through this through a while. I'm finally gonna be off dialysis. I'm gonna be good again. I can go back to work. I can do all of this. So, I'm happy as fuck, you know? Like, the next few days, 
like they still haven't told me the date because they knew i had an infection so they wanted to treat it with antibiotic or whatever and after um brigham and women's they called me again a few days later they told me your surgery is gonna be the 21st wednesday of october i was you don't even know how happy i was they set the date it was gonna be official i was gonna get my kidney i was gonna go through that transplant like i was excited and it was three people that went over there and they volunteered to donate and one of them matched me i haven't met them or anything i don't even know who they are but i would like to to meet them and see them and just ask them like can i give you a hug like you know just just give them a hug and then two hours later my nurse calls me and she tells me Maria, go to the emergency room right now. And I told her, like, what's going on tomorrow? I got to go to Brigham and Women's to get all my blood work done and EKG or whatever, um, x-rays and all that for the surgery because they set the date to the 21st. And she told me, I don't know if there's going to be a transplant. That bacteria is growing really fast. And that shit, like, I started crying, yo. Like, I had the ill mental breakdown. Like, I couldn't believe that shit. Like, maybe it wasn't meant for me, that kidney, or, you know. It just sucks. Like, I, I got mad excited and all that. And now I'm here in the hospital. Are you gonna come in? Are you not? But yeah. This is day five of me in the hospital. They had to take out the PD tube, the dialysis one in my stomach. They placed this one for temporary once again. Like I told you guys in the beginning in Boston, when I woke up, this is what I had in Boston Children's um, and tomorrow I have surgery again I'm gonna take this out and they're gonna put this in but you know that's life either way we're still here you gotta be grateful for everything um, I feel like shit right now but once you look pretty and stuff, you start to feel better. Um, just moral of this is, you know, check yourself. Um, you could be healthy one day and the next day you don't even know. Um, especially those those young like teenagers or whatever going to adult um, going to adult wait adolescent i don't even know how the fuck to say it but you know just everybody like your body's your temple keep check check up on it you know don't lack on that it's very important i mean me i always used to go to the clinic to to get checked and all that but they never caught on to that if they would have catched it earlier i would have been good there would have been another solution you know but i'm stuck in this shit for life now you know fuck them kidneys um but yeah um this is where i am right now um thank you for watching um please subscribe and share um spread awareness um and thank you for watching.
stay tuned for my next video um comment what you would like to see um ask questions um my next video just ask me a lot of questions and i'll be answering them okay thank you